Hi, it's Kernatex here again with the eighth in a series of videos about installing and maintaining Gen 2 Linux. So where we finished off last time was um, at the end of the Chromium installation um, and partly because the um, time limit on the video was uh, quite close and partly to demonstrate what I mentioned in that video about examining the logs looking for um, the output of a build um, I'm going to show that and just tidy up the rest of that that build after the chromium and then finally test it so I'm just logging back in to the machine So this might be the situation where you've um, uh, been building and something's happened or like myself you've had to, um, you, you've not been, as, been able to be around when the build is finished and you've lost all the output from the build. So what we can do is go to root user and then change directory to Far, uh, sorry, log portage, and then into e log. There's a summary dot log there. So I'm going to uh, tail the last. Actually, I'll use via. I think I can search it. log I'll go to the bottom of the file and just look back for the current date and time which was the 9th yesterday so there's one there and there's another one Okay, so the first one for the ninth is there at roughly one o'clock BST. So I'll just check these. So there's one there saying, please restart your login session in order for the sessions environment to include the new Moz GMP path variable. Well, rebooted from there, so the login session will have the correct environment variables. So there's nothing to do there. Some more messages there. Um, this is more to do with Git, so because there's not a package installed deliberately, I'm not really gonna bother plugging in there. Uh, sorry, uh, doing anything with that. There's some stuff here about browser plugins because um, Java was installed. Um, Explains about existing with Oracle's Java and the web start. And quite a bit of information. This is nothing really to do there. Okay, we've got a kernel change that's need user NS to be built into the kernel for Chromium to work correctly. And some fonts to install as well. So um, good ones to install out of these uh, Droid and Note, you make one of the other ones if you want additional uh, Japanese, Chinese I believe some of these fonts so I'm just going to install Droid and Noto and there's something here about adding a native file dialog by installing this package and there's a good chance that that's already installed so let's start with doing the kernel. Make menu config and we'll look for this user ns config flag. Find out where that is. Let's paste it in. And it's in general setup, namespaces support. So general setup. 
home spaces support right at the bottom. And it was user, wasn't it? It says properties that one. Yep, user NS. So we want to set that. Exit, exit, exit. And now build or rebuild the kernel. So that looks like that's going to go. That change touches a lot of the kernel. So while that's building, let's do the next bit, which you want to do is install, install Droid and Noto fonts. So I'll do that in this tab while the other one's going on. Noto and Droid. Okay, so Noto is already installed, so there's no point in reinstalling it. Let's just install the Droid ones. and it tells us we've got these new config files that have been added so we select font config so we can check that now select font config list and you can see the Noto ones we've obviously installed that previously because they're enabled and the droid ones are these three here so I'm going to enable those ones now so that's 26, 27 and 28 Enable 26, 20, oh, is it for spaces? Sorry, 27 and 28. And we can list that again. And you can see that they are with a little blue asterisk next to them now, showing they've been enabled. So, it sounds like Make's doing, I can hear the fan on my machine going. So, yeah, it's still going. So, last thing to do is to install this K dialog. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is already installed, but let's see what it does. Yeah, it is already installed, so it just means that the dialogues for Chromium will have um, a KDE feel to them. Um, and that is the end of the file, you can see it says bots there for bottom. So that is all the output that was important out of that final compile. So um, we'll just let the kernel rebuild finish. Then we'll install, install that and reboot to enable that namespace flag.
Okay, so that has built. Um, so we mount, mount the boot partition, install the new kernel. Install the modules in case anything's changed. Changed, and rebuild any external kernel modules. Right, okay, just move my cables not set up correctly. making this many changes to the kernel is because we are still installing the system, putting new packages in um, and basically tweaking the system. You, it could be that even you find something like the Bluetooth doesn't work or um, maybe the wireless doesn't work or your network adapter doesn't work or something like, like that where you need to go back in um, and just make some changes to get things working. Um, but once you've got a system up and running, the only time you ever really, really build the kernel is when the kernel gets updated. You just re uh, build the new one and install it and just leave it like that. So I'll just give this a few minutes to, to build. Okay, so the modules have been rebuilt. Let's just rerun the uh, MK config, recreate the config in case anything has changed there. Probably hasn't, but as I say, if you get in the habit of doing these things and you don't forget them for when it does matter, nothing worse than um, than building a kernel and forgetting to update the 
the config so that you haven't got that kernel available in in the menu. Although you could manually uh, boot, um, it's just more convenient. And it's done then as well. Okay, so I'm just going to reboot this to take on those changes. Okay, so um, one thing just going to do just to ensure the system's completely stable is um, I mean, there shouldn't be any problem with this, but just to be sure in my own mind that the system is um, stable in terms of updates, in terms of dependencies or orphan dependencies. Um, as long as the output of all these commands I'm going to do, which is the emerge update, the emerge dep clean, and the rev dep rebuild, as long as there's nothing produced by these, and I know the system's um, completely stable. <coughs> Just a sanity check to ensure I know what position the system's in. So that's okay. So there may be something with depth clean. Chances are there isn't, but there could be. Generally, there isn't anything to remove with depth clean after you've added stuff to the system. It only tends to be when you've made changes, or or especially so um, if you've removed something. So there's nothing there, let's just do a rev dep rebuild. Okay, so Finally, let's run Chromium. And there it is at the top. And there you go. So that's all working by the looks of it. And there you go. Okay, so. Um, what I'm going to do now is just install one more package, which is going to be the Battle for Wesnoth. So I think it's called Wesnoth, not sure, but it doesn't particularly matter because, as you've seen before, if you don't get the spelling right or, or you only get part of the name, then Emerge will try and guess what you meant. And in fact, you can see it, it has found it. But we need um, a keyword change, um, so that means that Wesnoth is not actually stable in, in, in any version. We can look that up here to Gen 2 Wesnoth. So this first package here, you can see there's two versions, 
and it is trying to install the later one but there's no stable versions they're all in um, yellow but that's okay if you want to carry on and install it what we do is add this in fact we add this with the equals to say that for this particular version we want to install it despite the fact that it's unstable and it also means that if this version because it's the newest one is made stable or indeed if even if the previous one's made stable then that that's the one that's because it's stable it would likely switch to so it's just saying that we only want to apply this keyword to this one version um, package.accepted keywords accept keywords So in the same way as we did with VirtualBox editions, we're just saying we only want this version to have a keyword AMD64. And we accept that it's um, unstable. Okay, so now Wesnoth has gone bright green, so it's going to be added to the world set. So I'll just give this a few other well, things about 10 minutes, so 10 15 minutes to build.
Okay, so Wesnoth is installed, there's no output, so it should be ready to run straight away. So let's just, yep, the application's updated, came up just then. In games, um, I think it's on a strategy. Yep, there it is. And there you go, there's the uh, main menu. And you can go into tutorial, find out how to play it, and so on. So let's come out of that now. So that's um, all there is for the actual installation part. So there's thousands of packages to install. I just want to demonstrate a few of the bigger ones, the more important ones maybe. Um, so the next video, what I'll be doing is doing an, an update on the system and taking you through that. So thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye.